Hi, I'm King Art 70. Today's topic is Revelation chapter 6. The four horsemen, the sixth seal, and the seventh seal. Before I get into the podcast, let's say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, bless us in all your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The sixth seal and the four beasts that John Patman a revelator, the last book of the New Testament, which fulfilled to three things the past, the future, and the present. That's what the book of Revelation means. Some things have been prophesied of old by the book of Ezekiel and Zechariah the prophet about these four horsemen that it would take land, kill, create peace, create famine, that's to say, lack of food and water. And starvation. The event will take place before the second coming of Christ and before Christ comes back here on this earth. Christ mentioned these in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 3, and Mark 13, 15, and Luke 16 as well. So he mentioned these and he his disciple asked him when all these things should come and when should it happen. And Christ replied that Pastor Lund, Earthquake in diverse places will happen before his second coming. So, without a further delay, we're going to go over the four horsemen and what they mean, what they represent, so you can know what they really are and who they're looking for. So, the four horsemen of Apocalypse, the word Apocalypse means uh, the end of this earth age, referred to as the four horsemen or figures in, some people say, Christian faith appear in the New Testament. Find a book of Revelation and what it re- represents to. In the Old Testament, Revelation and Apocalypse written by John Patman, as well as in the Old Testament, Prophet, Book of Zechariah, and in the Book of Ezekiel, where they were named as punishment for God. Revelation 6 tells of a book scroll in God's right hand that is sealed with seven seals, the Lamb of God, Lion of Judah, opened the first four of the seal, seven seal, which some are for beings that ride out on white, red, black, and pale horses. To Zechariah, they are described as the one whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth, causing it to rest quietly. Ezekiel lists them as sword, famine, and wild beasts and plague. That's what they represent, and that's what they're going to bring here on the earth before the true Christ, which is God himself, come here on the earth. In John Revelation, the first horseman is on a white horse carrying a bow and given a crown riding forward as a figure of conquest, perhaps invoking Passalin. Christ spoke of Christ spoke of that in Matthew 24, 3. Or the Antichrist, which in the Greek is instead of the original Jesus, it is the fake one, which is Satan. The second carries a sword. Sword represents power. And rides a red horse. Red represents um, war. And is the creator of war. The third is a food merchant. Riding up on a black horse. Symbolic famine. That is a lack of food and water. The fourth and final horse is pale green. And up on it rides death. Accompanied by Hades. Now you know it mentioned. uh, You know the, the book of Revelation chapter 6. Talks about death and hell. Followed the pale horse. Now, this ain't the real hell that John speaks of. Okay, this is actually Hades. Okay, the King James Version translates the word hell, but if you break that word back to the original language, it actually means Hades. What is Hades? Again, Hades is the unseen world which cannot be visualized as as we look and see why we're driving and walking down the road or in our home or out of the house at a park at a beach or whatever we might be on vacation that's visualizing we can see the water in the trees and everybody around it haiti is the unseen world that cannot be seen with human eye now some people believe they can see in the future they can uh, see they can see the dead and the undead and those who died on passed on the other side of the gulf no one can see that unless in you are of god Okay, no one can see that, and that's why a lot of people make their mistake, thinking they have some type of supernatural power, or to read these signs as witches, and those who say they are prophet or prophetess can see in the future of what could happen. That's a lie. 
Okay, so basically, the Hades is an unseen world. It's the world of the dead. It's where the angels are being kept at. As written in the book of the book of Enoch, chapter twenty-one, where Yorel told uh, Enoch that the angels that sinned, the original sin, and been held here in this spot until the time of to be judged. As it's written in Second Peter two four, for God not spare not the angel that sinned, but cast him down to the lower part of the earth. The that's to say Hades. So Hades went along with the pale horse. Okay, now some people betray the horse here as Christ. This is not the real Jesus. These are fake uh, people who bring war here on the earth. Christ spoke about them in the book of Matthew twenty four, Mark fifteen. Three, all right. Don't believe it. And upon it rise death, accompanied by Hades. They were given authority over a quarter of the earth. Now you notice know said uh, the pale horse. All right, death accompanied by Hades. They were given authority over a quarter of the earth. They didn't say this. Don't mean all nature go. But this is not saying all nations will be at war. A quarter of the earth, not even. The whole earth, okay? They're going to be getting a quarter of the earth to kill with sword, famine, and plague, and, there, and by means of the beast of the earth, okay? So, without a further delay, I'm going to take you to the book of Revelation real quick, and we're going to go over it, so you can get a better understand what I'm saying to you in this verse. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder and of the four beasts saying, come and see. Now, who's the lamb? Lamb is none other than the Lord Jesus. Remember John? Uh, John saw Christ in the book of John, the gospel of John 129. Behold, the lamb of God, which come to take away the sins of the world. That will be God himself in the flesh. He opened one of the seals and the seals represents in symbolic of the event that will occur here before Christ returned here on the earth. Saying, come and see. Now, beast in the Greek is simply a living thing. This will refer to an angel. Okay? Angel. Verse 2. And I saw, and behold, uh, look, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's to say, conquer the earth. Remember, these four riders are not to take over the whole nation, and all nation to be at war, but a quarter of them... It be giving them a quarter of the earth to make war and famine. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, come and see. That's the second beast would be an angel. All right? Remember, the word beast in the Greek is simply a living thing, a living creature God created. God created all things. Remember John said in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 before Revelation 6. And there went out other horse that was red, and behold, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. That's the war horse. That's the red horse. And that that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Sword represents authority. Verse five. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, "Come and see." And I beheld, I looked, and see a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balance in his hand. And the black horse represents famine and pestilence and lack of food. All right? That's that's what the black horse represents in the book of Revelation. So you can get a better understand what it's saying. Well, listen to some man who half teaching you God's word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the middle of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny. And three measure of barley for a penny. And see you hurt not the oil and the wine. That's the voice we're speaking of. Christ. All right? He heard a voice in the middle of the beast saying, A measure of wheat for a penny. And three measure of barley for a penny. And see you hurt not the oil and the wine. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. These are angels, remember? Verse 8, And I looked, and behold, I saw a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. Who's Death? Satan is Death. Remember, uh, God, told, God was speaking to uh, the Apostle Paul 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50, the last enemy that God will destroy is death, and Satan is death. And he, and and I look and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell, that word in the Greek is Hades, Hades followed him, and power was given to him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. The beasts of the earth will be those who are not living according to God's word. And giving power to kill those who did not accept Christ and judgment be on those who did not choose and follow the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those will be killed. Christ spoke about these event in his prophecy with his disciple. Verse 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony in which they held. These are those who choose not to bow down and entangle themselves with the fakeness of teaching and these people and the four horsemen who comes down and try to wreak havoc on one quarter, a quarter of the earth. And those will be slain. And there will be a lot of people who will be slain for God's word. As it was in the time of the Apostle Paul and John. Now, what they did, John got beheaded. Paul got beheaded. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. So when this time comes, when Christ comes, he's seen this sixth seal, fifth seal, that those who choose not to follow and do, do, do the things that everybody else does on this time, of this time period when it does happen, will be slain for believing in our Father. And accepting God as their Savior. There will be a lot of people slain in this period of time. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do, do you not judge and vent our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How long? Holy, who is holy and who is true? Christ is holy. Christ is true. Uh, do you not judge to avenge our blood on them? The world on the earth, that's to live on the earth. Do you not uh, judge and avenge our blood upon them? Christ will get the last say. Christ will get the last final say. Why? Because he's God. Okay, don't worry about it. All right. Verse 11. And white robes were given to every one of them. It was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servant also and their brother that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Let's say should be completed. So a little season, God asking us to John Patman that it only will last for a season. You don't have to worry about anything that you will be lost as long as you follow God and God's word and keep your head up and your face towards where our Father needs you to be at, you will be okay. Don't need to worry about what's going on in this particular time. But these are the fifth and sixth seal that John Patman is pointing out to us in the book of Revelation. All right, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and saw there was a great earthquake. Remember Christ talked about these uh, earthquake in diverse places, Passolin. All these things are going to happen, but the end is not yet. But all this, this event will take place during the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why we need to prepare ourselves, be fed up and read up and study with God's word so we can know and be ready when he comes. Okay, Earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Remember, quoting back in the book of time of Christ, spoke about that in the book of Matthew. Uh, talk about the time in the book of Joel, where it said the moon go between the earth and the blood, and the blood, moon will turn to blood. Uh, all this stuff is a prophecy that was prophesied before uh, Christ came, which is God himself in the flesh. And now yet, John Patman is bringing up in this uh, seven seal event from the full four horsemen to the four living creatures which is to say the angels and the four fifth six seal john speaks of okay verse 13 and the stars of heaven fell to the earth even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken up in mighty wind all right and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is Rolled together, and every mountain in Allen were moved out of the places. So this is the 
Second Earth Age will be destroyed. We talked about this. I talked about this in one of my podcasts. I talk about the Second Earth Age will be passed away. Uh, eventually, this one is the second one. Uh, second Peter chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 5, 6, and 7. Uh, the verse 7 in Second Peter talks about the seven, the, the, the second earth age. He says, But the heaven and earth which are now kept by the same word, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man. That's the second one. And then in verse 13, all we're down in that same chapter, he talks about, uh, Look for, nevertheless, look for a new heaven and a new earth. All right, that's the third earth age, which is not yet here, but yet to come. So we talked about that over and over. Christ talks about it. Uh, Matthew 24, 35, and 36, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away, okay? We know this earth age and this time period will pass away. Not a different world, same world, but different age, okay? There's only three earth ages. We're in the second one. There's one more to come. That will be the new earth age, the new heaven age, along with the new Jerusalem that Christ got, uh, got it prepared for us. So you need to understand when it says the heaven will scroll up like a scroll, that means this heaven age uh, and then all we're down in that verse 14 in the second Peter, Peter said the firmament, which is to say, uh, the rudiments, anything, all the elements of the earth will be destroyed by our father and will be dissolved by God. Because it's the elements of the earth. That's to say the trees, birds, snow, ice, water, people, everything, house, home, everything, anything that live upon this earth age will be dissolved by our father. So that's basically what he's saying. The earth will, will uh, pass away. With a great noise. All right. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great man and the rich man and the chief captain and the mighty men and every slave and every free man hide themselves in the den, in the rocks of the mountain. Yes, you can't hide from my father. When that time comes, you can run and hide upon anything, but you won't be able to get away from it. Why? Because Christ come and judge the earth and those who did not accept him. So there's no way. And there's no escaping. At the time, in the time of Noah, they couldn't run away from the flood. God made it possible. Genesis chapter 7, verse 7, where even if a bird would try to fly above the firmament, that's to say the sky with the moon and the star you see at night. And even if that bird would try to fly above the earth, above those clouds, that water was able to get to that fowl and, 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 and destroy that fowl. Because when God said, I will destroy everything, under the under the heaven that I made, he mean he will store birds as well. So it's telling you if they couldn't get away, you couldn't get away neither. So that's impossible. No way a man or a woman possibility can get away from the wrath of our father. That's what I'm trying to explain to you in this podcast. You cannot get away from God. God got it where he go get you. Okay? He go get you and you can't get out of it. All right? Verse 16 and say it to the mountain and rocks fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, that is to say Christ. For the great day of his wrath is come and who should be able to stand? Nobody, because you won't be able to get away. As I told you in the beginning, uh, end of this podcast, those people, when they, when those fallen angels want to mix with those mortal women in Genesis chapter six, God made it where nothing could escape his wrath and his judgment. Okay. As I told you, in the beginning of this podcast, in the end of this podcast, even if a bird would try to get away from the water, more water was coming from the foundation of the deep than it was coming from the heavens. They still would have got drowned, and they did got drowned because God made it possible. Even if a bird would fly above the firmament in the sky or the stars, even he wouldn't survive. God made it where the water went so high up into the firmament, nothing would be able to be saved. So that's all I got for you in this podcast. Hope you leave a, 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 a genuine comment in this section of this podcast. Let me know what you think about this podcast. Leave a comment down. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to this channel. I'm King Art 70 and thank you for listening and God bless you.